Hi everyone, Tori here. Today I'm sharing a scrapbooking process video called Xylophone Playing Octopus, which I know is a ridiculous title, but when you see the pictures, you're going to totally understand why I chose it, and I just think it's adorable, and it is going to go on the page. So I thought, why not just call the process video that as well? So I hope you enjoy this process video. I really love the way that this page turned out. So I'm just starting by showing you the paper I'm going to be using and I'm using two from the Far Far Away Studio Calico scrapbooking kit. This striped one and this big watermark um, one as well. I love those papers and I'm excited to use them on this page because I think these colors look so beautiful together and as soon as I saw this paper I had an idea. I wanted to cut that watermark circle image out and layer it on top of some other paper. And I just showed you the photos there and I'm using two photos of a little girl that is um, one of my good friend's daughters. And I went over to their house for the weekend and her two daughters, Genevieve and Hylise, were putting on plays for us. And in these photos, Hylise, the littlest one, is wearing an octopus costume and she's playing a xylophone. So I hope that gave you some indication as to why I called this a xylophone playing octopus. And she just looks so adorable playing that, so I definitely wanted to scrapbook these. So I begin the page by trimming down the striped paper, taking about a half inch off of each side. And I also take off the branding strip from the watermark page. And I love mounting pages, so the reason for trimming off some of the page is just so that I can mount the stripes on another page. So I'm going to begin by cutting this watermark page and I'm going to cut off all the white and I'm just going to leave the big circle um, watercolor pink image that you see there on the page and I'm going to layer that on top of the stripe. When I began this page I didn't really have a final outcome in mind. I just knew I wanted to use that stripe paper and the watermark and now I'm just trying to decide how should I mount that. Originally I thought I had mounted on the cream cardstock that came in the kit but it didn't really match the white stripes that were in that stripe. So I'm going to be using just a white piece of Nina white cardstock that I had in my kit. And I'm not going to leave a lot of the white showing. I'm just going to trim a little tiny bit off of the stripes on each side so that there's a little tiny border. Now I hate wasting paper, especially when it's white, and I know that there's a way I'll reuse it. So I am cutting out the middle of this and just gutting the paper so I have some extra white cardstock to use for layering. I'm just going to speed this up a teeny bit just because I spend a lot of time adhering this onto the page. But just so you know, I'm going to be using my Express It double sided tape, putting that on all the sides, and then adhering the stripe page down to the paper. And once I'm done that, I'll adhere the uh, watermark as well, just trying to figure out which corner to put it in. And I'm going to use my photos for reference to determine whether it should be in the bottom left hand corner or the top right hand corner or another corner. I just play around with it a little bit, but then I go back to my original plan, which was to put it in the top left hand corner. After I adhere everything on this page, I'm going to curl up the edges because I want there to be lots of dimension and layering. So you notice that I curled up the edges around the stripe and I'm also going to curl up the edges on this watermark as well. And then for my photos, when I layer those up, I'll curl up the pages as well. Now these photos were taken in my friend's living room, which she has a beautiful living room, but there's a lot of colors and patterns and stuff going on. So I'm trimming the photos quite small just to make sure that they are the focus, not the rest of the craziness in the picture. And what I'm going to be doing, and you'll be seeing me do for the next couple minutes, is layering that on a bunch of different papers. So I am almost done using my Studio Calico Far Far Away kit. I just have scraps and then I have one other layout which I will be posting soon, which is my favorite layout that I made. So what I'm going to be using for this layout is just all the scraps and I use some of that yellow, blue, and mint, and black and white cardstocks and pattern paper that came in the kit and I'm going to layer it up like a ton of times on both of them. Sometimes I layer it in a perfect square and then sometimes I just do a corner. 
And that's what you're seeing me do now. And the reason it's going so fast is because I didn't think you wanted to sit here and watch this for a really long time. Because I really do spend a really long time layering these photos with um, patterned paper. I had so much fun at my friend Andrea's house and her girls are just truly hilarious. You would love them. They're so funny. Like, I was laughing the whole entire time. And Heidelace, who's only like four or five, I think, she is such a goofball. She's so funny. She was wearing this octopus costume and she was walking around pretending to be an octopus and her sister would come along and then um, all of a sudden she'd go, I inked you, which she thought was so hilarious. So then she continued to do it and continue to ink her sister, <laughs> which was really funny. I think that comes from some movie, which I can't really think of what movie it is right now, but I think that's where she heard it. Sorry, I don't know what happened with my camera. It stopped all of a sudden, and then when it turned back on, it was sort of cloudy. So it does get clearer later, so sorry about that. Um, the next thing I'm doing right now is using the neon colored crayon that comes in this month's kit, and it's water soluble. And I believe the color is salmon. It's like a light pinkish, orangish color or salmon color. And I wanted to just add something extra to the striped paper where the photos were going to be. So I use the crayon and I draw around where the photos are going to be. And I scribble it with the crayon and then I use some water just to dilute it. Now this, this isn't watercolor paper so I didn't use a ton of water because I didn't want it to buckle. But um... If you were afraid it was going to buckle, you could have put it on watercolor paper or adhered the straight paper to the background paper afterwards to sort of stretch it out. But I don't really mind because the rest of the layout is going to be very um, dimensional. So I feel like it works well to just use a little tiny bit of water. So what you just saw me do, and now I'm going to slow down the video a little bit, is I had a lot of that black and white paper that I absolutely love that had like floral design on it. And I decided to fussy cut some of those flowers out and I was watching TV. I think I was watching Friends. And I just sat and fussy cut the flowers out and I cut out a bunch of them. And I'm going to layer those underneath and around the photos. And I decided to sort of create three sections one to the left one above and then one to the right hand corner and I'm going to layer those somewhat under the photos and under all the layers of paper that I had made on each of the photos. In each flower cluster I'm going to use some dimensional adhesive and or dimensional dots or foam dots or whatever you call them and layer those under a couple photos just to add some extra dimension to those flower clusters. And I love the way that that looks. These ones are extra thick. I think they're one millimeter wide and they add a lot of dimension. And I love the way that they look on the flowers in each section. Now at this point I'm thinking that I'm going to be doing some journaling on the right hand corner on the lines and use the lines as sort of my direction. But I don't like how there's this big blank space in that bottom left hand corner feels like there's missing something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some Project Life cards um, from Studio Calico a few months back that are sort of like Mad Lib cards and they have like letters and there's blanks so that you can write in your messages or stamp your messages. And they are actually the perfect color for this layout. At first I thought I'd use this like pink one which matched perfectly with that watercolor and the pink stripes on the page. But then I'm like, oh maybe yellow will work or blue or the light pink. So I'm going to try out a bunch of them. But in the end I decide to go with that mint, mintish blue color that you're seeing there. And it actually is the same color as the stripes as well as that polka dot mint paper that you see un layered underneath the photos and it just brings more of that color into the page. So the one that I eventually end up using is the mint colored one and it says, Dear Blank, you are such an blank kid. I love that you are blank and blank. And then I'm gonna use that there, but it was a little too wide. So I end up using my Fiskars trimmer to just trim a little bit extra off the sides and off the top, just so that it focuses mostly, mostly on the card and not all the extra space around. And I love the way that that looks on the page. But I was feeling like it just looked plain because the photos had like eight, nine layers of paper under them. 
So I decided I'm going to layer that under some paper as well. And I decided to use that same black and white floral pattern which I had cut those flowers out of. And I layer it on top of that. And I love the way that that looks on the page in that bottom left hand corner. And I'm going to be adhering it with double sided tape as well. And I'm going to put it wonky just like the photos are wonky like not perfectly straight. And the reason I'm doing that is because it creates a lot of flow on the page. Like your eye starts with that deer card and then flows along the page to the middle photo and then the larger photo on the far right hand side. Now there was a little bit of space to the left of the card that just looked odd and out of place. So I'm going to grab some more of that black and white floral pattern and add that down there as well. I'm going to actually layer up two pieces. So I find that when you use one element in multiple places upon the page, it helps create a cohesive layout and helps it work well together and flow. And the fact that those flowers start on the left of that card and then go all the way down to that bottom right hand corner just draws your eye to that bottom right hand corner and all the way along the page. And that bottom corner just needed one more little flower so I cut out another one and stuck it there. And when I'm done with that, I'm going to start adding some more things to just finish off the page. And I noticed that around the card there was none of that neon color so I just added a little bit more of that. And once I'm finished with that, I'm going to start embellishing the page. So I began by grabbing the embellishments that I had from the three main kits of the Far Far Away Studio Calico January kit. And I just grabbed those all out and pulled out anything that I think might work. I'm going to start with some labels. And there was this rose gold copper kind of labels on that one page and there were three of them. So I decide that I'll use those on this page. The one that I just put down under that one flower, it says dance party. I don't know, she was playing music and it made me want to dance, so I stuck that there. And then the other one, the large rose gold label and then the medium or smallish one, I'm going to just choose different places and cut those in half and just glue those around the page. And uh, again, just adding embellishments along that same flowing cluster. What a funny word, flowing cluster, but you know what I mean. Maybe I'll take over the scrapbooking world with a new term, flowing cluster. So spread that out on all your Facebooks and Instagrams and Twitters, use the phrase flowing cluster, and then everyone will know that I created that term. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, don't do that, it's a ridiculous term. When I'm making these videos, I just can't talk sometimes. Anyway, sorry, ignore me. Okay, back to what I was doing. I had two more of those pink and gold hearts and I'm just gonna choose a couple places to put those. And they will also be in that flowing cluster. And once I've done that, I'm just gonna see if I have any other embellishments or things that I want to add to the page. And I just have a bin that I keep a bunch of random scraps and run random embellishments and random pieces in. And I'm just seeing if any of those will fit anywhere on the page or in this embellishment cluster at the top. I grab some rub-ons to see if any of those will work. I don't end up using any of the rub-ons, but I do end up using a bunch of labels. So I'm going to just pull out a bunch that I have now. I think half of these come from Kelly Perky and the other half come from Studio Calico or Old Kits. So I'm just going to grab them all out and then I'm going to sort of see which ones are the right colors and which ones sort of fit with what is on the page. I have a bunch of those bluish ones that are the same color as the mint card and the mint on the page. So one of them that I just stuck down there says, and now, oh, and then this happened with an arrowhead. And then I also have some that have sort of a goldish color on them, like the one that I'm cutting now. And I'm going to add two of those. Um, the one I add on the top says, Here's to the crazy ones, and the one that I'm going to add at the bottom in just a moment says, thanks for the memories. And I just thought they sort of fit with the overall theme of what was going on. She was being crazy and silly, but I'm thankful for the memories because I just love this. And one day when she grows up, I want to show her this page and be like, remember that time you dressed up as an octopus and played the xylophone? She probably won't because she's little, but it'll be cute anyways. 
And I'm just going to grab some of my enamel dots and try to decide what colors to use. And I pull out any that match the page. I pull out some blue candy dots or blue enamel dots from Studio Calico. And those blue ones, I don't remember what they, where they come from, but they're called candy dots. And I also grab some peach ones and I spread those throughout the page, just all along that flowing cluster that you see there. And once I was done with that, I was ready to get to the rest of the page, add the title and the journaling. So I disappeared for a couple minutes to try to figure out what letter stickers to use for my title. And in the end, I decided to use these transparent letters. They're, they're a perfect size for that giant space up there. And these letter stickers come from Amy Tangerine and I believe they're called Remarks. And they come in all those different colors and they're sort of like a transparent color. I love that you get so many of each letter and that you get them in all those different colors. This is like the best. I'm, as soon as this one's done, I'm gonna go buy like four more because I love these letter stickers. So I was debating whether to use the gray or the pinkish red at the top. In the end, I decided to use the red because it stands out more and makes the title um, easier to read on that watermark. But I knew the title was too long that I wasn't sure if it was going to fit. So I decided to just put the title on some wax paper so that I can figure out where I want the title and then once I'm done with that then I will adhere it. So I'm just going to speed this up because it takes me a long time to find all the letters. And if you see me stop for a moment it is because I am looking up how to spell xylophone. I knew that xylophone started with an X and a Y but I just wanted to double check the spelling because it is very often that I spell something wrong on my layout and have to go back and fix it. And I didn't want to spell it wrong for you in a process video. That would have been really embarrassing. I am a horrible speller. Anyways, um, I love these letters and they work out really well. And the other thing I like about my title, Xylophone Playing Octopus, is it uses letters that I don't normally use in titles like X, Y, and P's, which I use three P's on here. And I can't think of another title that I've ever done that has used that many P's. Maybe if I did a title with the word happy. My only problem that I um, happened upon was I didn't have enough O's. So first I started by using Q's which were the exact same shape and cutting off the line but then that last O there I just didn't have any more Q's either. So I ended up using the letter C and a letter D and sort of putting them together. And these letter stickers are perfect for that because they're so simple that it's easy to piece together letters if you're missing a letter that you need. Now this whole entire layout probably took me two hours which is a long time and because I was being really particular about these letters and I was watching a movie so um you're seeing me measure which I like never do I usually just stick things down but I felt because the title was sort of all by itself and there was nothing else going to go on up there that it was more important for me to make sure that the title was straight and that the uh, xylophone playing octopus sort of um, worked well there. Once I was done adding my title, I started adding, adding my journaling. That card says, Dear Hylise, you are such an amazing kid. I love that you're goofy and silly. And then in the top right hand corner, I just added some more journaling about her and about what had happened. Um, and about what a goofy kid she was. And I love that the girls put on a play for us and a little bit about her character and everything. Now this is probably like a total scrapbooking faux pas, but I could not find a pen anywhere. So I am just using a regular black pen. Nothing fancy, just a regular black pen. And it works well until I get to that part that has some of the neon coloring on it because the pen doesn't really work there. So I have to scrunch it up into that little white space that's still there. But it does work okay. So I'm going to finish up my layout now by just adding a date stamp. And I'm using this date stamp and I'm putting January 10th, 2015. So this is a pretty recent layout. And then I just felt like the layout needed one final touch and that's some black mist. So I'm using some Heidi Swap Color Shine Black Mist and just adding some dots around the page. I originally thought I would just add them on that title part, but then I felt like it needed some in some additional places. 
just as I finish up here, I just want to say thank you everyone for liking, commenting, and subscribing. It means a lot to me, and I really appreciate all of your support, and oh, your comments are so sweet. Anyways, that's it. The page is done. Thanks everyone for joining me. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.